Good morning, Nomad. So we're here in Winchester, Tennessee, and we're about to head to Jack Daniels for a behind the scenes tour of one of the best whiskeys, I think, in America. And they're gonna show us how they make the whiskey, everything. I love Jack Daniels. Danny's about to get drunk. <laughs> Off one shot. Off one shot. So we are here at the Jack Daniels Welcome Center. And we're gonna show you exactly how Jack Daniels got started, behind the scenes, and all the exciting things to do here in Lynchburg, Tennessee. My family grew up you know, on Jack Daniels. I'm a Jack Daniels fan. And Danny here is gonna get tipsy. Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> now, of course, I've tasted it before, a uh -huh. time or two. Um, but I'm a lightweight. I'm gonna work on that today. <laughs> so please support me in that area. I sure will. <laughs> Well, y'all come on out. We're going to show you around. I uh, like the fact that you say y'all because I'm from Texas. Well, honey, that's all we say around here is y'all. Okay. All right, so we're getting on the bus now. Y'all, this is Jacob. We call him Big Country. Hey, Big, Big Country. Country. Good. 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 Everybody loves that cowboy hat, don't they? I'm sure somebody told y'all that this was a dry county, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Not know that. We do have people that come here every single day that have no clue about a dry county, don't even know what that means. So we went dry back before Prohibition. We've stayed dry ever since. Of course, one thing we do have here, we have the entire world supply of Jack Daniels whiskey. Every <laughs> single drop of Jack sold anywhere around the world is made right here in a dry county at the distillery that y'all are about to tour. Daniel started a long time ago for his employees. We still get to continue that tradition today. All of the employees get a free bottle of whiskey on the first Friday of every month. Ooh, so, wow. I'm going to be an employee here. <laughs> Good Friday. You're looking forward to your bottle? I sure am. Do you still have your bottle from the last time? Partially. I have the bottle. The whiskey's in question. The bottle is there, but the whiskey's in question. That's too big for the mellowing process because we're dripping whiskey over charcoal and if we dripped it over that it would just roll around it like water on rocks. So they do grind it down to a smaller more uniform size piece and that way when the whiskey drips the charcoal filters the whiskey. Of course that's the whole point of charcoal mellowing is filtering whiskey. And it doesn't really smell like burnt wood. Tell them why. Why is that? Chicken maple don't have a smell or a taste to it once it's in charcoal form. Okay. Wow. So that's why they use sugar maple. Nice. Jack Daniels whiskey is, which is wow. Tennessee whiskey. I mean, the charcoal cool. is what makes us Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> Every drop of Jack Daniels whiskey sold anywhere in the world for the last 14 years has run through charcoal that those two guys made. Wow, that's pretty. So. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> now that's history right there. That is history. All right. I'll go ahead and stop and tell y'all how Jack learned how to make whiskey because mm -hmm. that's a huge part of our history. It's a really important story for us. And before Jack was making whiskey just right here on this property, he actually was making whiskey about five miles from here. Uh -huh. And he was on the Reverend Dan Call farm. Well, Jack, he was the baby of 10 children yes. and his mama died just right after he was born. So his dad remarried and Jack didn't really get along with his stepmom. So he left home at a young age and eventually he was living and working on the call farm probably around 1860 before he even reached his teenage years. Mm -hmm. And the Reverend had a steal which Jack took a lot of interest in, but this was before the Civil War, so it was before emancipation, mm -hmm. and the steel was under the watching care of an enslaved man. Nathan Nearest Green. Nathan Nearest Green, Nathan yeah. Nearest uh -huh. Green, yeah. And Nearest Green, he really took Jack under his wing. I mean, he worked with him side by side every day. He's the one who taught Jack what would eventually be his life's passion. So mm -hmm. we for sure talk more about Nearest Green a little bit later on. But I'd like to tell everybody to stop and think about what this land looked like in the late 1800s. Late 1800s. I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, there were no buildings, no roads, no walkways back here. It was nothing but hills and trees. And Jack was just roaming around out here looking uh -huh. for water to make whiskey. And the water he found was perfect for making whiskey back then. It's still perfect today. That's why we still use it. It's a cool 56 degrees year round. Oh wow. And the water's coming from an underground spring. It's mm. located in the limestone cave. So when the water hits the limestone, it's picking up minerals that contribute to the taste of the whiskey. Mm -hmm. But it leaves out iron, which of course would ruin whiskey. And Jack knew that. 
So he settled his steel just right at the mouth of a cave and started using the water to mill grains, make mash, to steal whiskey. I mean, that's what we use the water for today. We haven't really changed a whole lot about the way we've made whiskey since Jack was here, but I can tell you we make a lot more than what Jack Daniels did. <laughs> this is the original building from the days that Jack Daniels lived. So this is the only building that was that's still on the property. That's not still on the property, but the original building. And while we're coming in here, I mean, these are pictures of our master distillers. We've only had a handful of master distillers the entire history of the Jack Daniel Distillery. And the master distiller is the person that oversees the entire whiskey making operation from start to finish. So that's a huge job title here at the distillery. And the group photo has Jack Daniel in it. He's the oh. one with the black vest, the curly bow tie, and the white hat. And that's Jack Daniel. That's Jack Daniel, yeah. And where about the, the other guy? Nearest Green. Nearest Green, is he in it? Well, photo? we don't have a picture of Nearest Green. Oh. No known photo exists. Wow. Closest thing that we have is this picture right here. Mm. This picture has his son, George Green, in it. Oh, his See, son. That's, yeah, that's George sitting right beside Jack Daniel. Wow. And, you know, the time period that this photo was taken back then, this picture was taken in the late 1800s. Back then in the South, this man right here would have not have normally been allowed to sit next to exactly. the owner of a business. Yeah. Of course, we think that says a lot about Jack's character and says a lot about who that person is. So uh -huh. it's, it's George Green. And that's why I feel like I appreciate Jack Daniels more than a lot, not saying a lot of other whiskey mm -hmm. company because it did have an African-American influence. Mm -hmm. And just to see this picture, like you can see pictures back in the 1800s where white and black people couldn't take pictures together. Right. So I think that's really, that's, that's American history right there, you know? And there's a lot of history to the, the town of Lynchburg and how uh, Jack treated Nearest Green and his family pretty much kind of set the standard for the whole town. Mm. I mean, the whole town treated the Greens with the most up most respect and this picture really shows that i mean it shows how much jack respected the green family and you know there's even more to that story because nearest green actually was our first master distiller i mean he's the person who taught jack how to make whiskey but not long after jack learned how to make whiskey he had the opportunity to buy the steel from dan call dan was a minister and his congregation didn't really want him having a whiskey still anymore so he sold it to jack um, some people say jack Bought it for about $21, might have been about 13 years old at the time. But the first person that Jack hired was somebody that he trusted, he looked up to, admired, and respected. So he hired his mentor, Nearest Green, as a free man to be his head distiller, or what we call a master distiller today. And uh, more than 150 years have passed since then. But from that day back then to now, there's always been members of the Green family working at the distillery. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jack Daniel typically was not the first person to work in the mornings. Usually his nephew, Lim Motlow, would come in here and open everything up for him. But one morning, Jack got here early before everybody else. He went to open his safe. He forgot his own combination, much like we would forget a password today. Mm -hmm. But he finally got so frustrated that he kicked that, that safe as hard as he could, and he broke his toe. And he limped around for several weeks before going to the doctor. Of course, when he went to the doctor, he found out he had gangrene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they cut his toe off. Infection set up, started to spread so much. Eventually, they started amputations. And this was bit by bit, all the way up his leg, all the way up to his hip, trying to save his life. Six years after kicking that safe at only 61 years old, Jack died from complications. And all of those complications started right here in this room with that early morning mistake. So right here is the control room. It looks very scientific in there. You know what this smells like? My mom, I live in a farm, in, grew up on a farm in Texas. So we had pigs, but we fed them corn. And like when the corn sits out in barrels, it has this, 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 it ferments. Yeah. It smells exactly like this. Um, I'm gonna wait a second before I open that up because there'll be a lot of gases that come off of okay. it when I do. Um, we're on day two fermentation. When I open this up, you're gonna see that mash bubbling and it will look like it's boiling, but remember I told you it's not hot, it's ferment. And during fermentation, yeast eats up sugar, it turns into alcohol, and it releases gases, which causes it to bubble. And by the time we use this mash, it's like 12% alcohol. So we'll take it from a fermenter, and we pump it up through a steel, like I told you about downstairs. Five gallons of this mash is gonna make one gallon of whiskey every single day. So y'all can have a look in there. Oh, wow. Remember, that's not hot. So there's lots of uh, fun gases coming off of there. Woo. You smell it? Woo. That is strong. It's like rubbing alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> right here, 
uh-huh. you'll get you a big old smell. Now these are locked. Okay. We haven't paid okay, taxes. We haven't paid taxes on this whiskey yet, so we're kind of oh. cheating the system a little bit. Okay. okay. You want to get you a big old deep breath right okay. here. Y'all ready? Yes. Oh. oh my God. That smells so good. It's my shot right here. <laughs> Yeah, you actually taste it if you, if oh, you breathe it enough. Wow. <laughs> and of course, I just did. Yes. Right? Yeah, you mm-hmm. taste it. I'm, a little I'm ready for some whiskey now. <laughs> well, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Head on down. This has been a very great tour. Brandy has been great. Ashley, who does PR and marketing for Jack Daniels, has been awesome as well. So if you ever want to come on a Jack Daniels tour, make sure you have Brandy as your tour guide and reach out to Ashley. An amazing experience behind the scenes here at Jack Daniels in Lynchburg, Tennessee. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. I just gave you a plug how awesome you were. <laughs> when the whiskey comes out of charcoal mellowing, it's time now for the whiskey to go in a barrel and start the maturation process. And the barrel becomes an ingredient for the whiskey. I mean, that's what gives us all the color yep. and and most of the flavor. So the barrel is so important to us. We make our own. And uh, we have two Cooperages that make our barrels. One is in Louisville, Kentucky. It's called the Brown Foreman Cooperage. The other is in Trinity, Alabama. It's called the Jack Daniel Cooperage. So we don't make our barrels just right here on the property. These barrel heads that are in here are some of the original barrels that he filled when he put into a barrel house. So check the date right here. Filled November 12, 1938. So that was right after Prohibition. Wow. This is crazy. Ooh, this is fancy. Look like you get the drink. I know. I drink the drink. Drink. <laughs> so look at this setup right here. So this is exclusive, this is pretty. So Gentleman Jack, really get the a little sip. Sip a little now. And, and hold, it on, hold it in your mouth for a second? You don't have to. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can. Some people do suggest to do that mm-hmm. for first tasting. First tasting of Gentleman Jack here. Taste it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Ash is going to be driving us back home. <laughs> I like Gentleman Jack the most in the summertime because it doesn't have a lot of that warm finish to mm-hmm. it. So to me, because it kind of has that lighter, crisper, clean finish, I like it with like a ginger ale and some lime juice. I love it with hand squeezed lemonade. Look at you. I like the t- Tennessee honey and lemonade. The Tennessee honey and lemonade. That's my favorite. So that's just probably the most iconic whiskey label in the entire world. In the entire world. Yeah. yeah. It's sold in almost 170 countries worldwide. It's very recognizable. Yeah, wow. very recognizable. Because yeah. whenever I go to a bar in different countries, I make sure I look for Jack Daniels. Mm-hmm. And Jack Daniels, uh, it's, it's top shelf. Right. You know, it's always the people you've never watched, uh, never, you know, been, you don't know too much about alcohol. Jack Daniels never sitting on the bottom shelf. It's always sitting at the top. So it's always eye level because it's top quality. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. But this is our original brand. It's, it's our number one bestseller. And this is the one that Jack has been making since the beginning of time since the beginning of time yeah one so this one is called um tennessee straight rye and it has so it has a different recipe it's not a corn-based whiskey like we've done for years we're doing something a little bit different here and this one we've mingled barrels together so that we could make a consistent it's fruity on the smell some people get banana apricot i smell juicy fruit chewing gum i don't know why it's just weird to me but it smells like juicy fruit chewing gum mm-hmm. um this is a rye that we're about to try this would be considered like the big dog for me <laughs> so i'll just deal with Porch. <laughs> you know, I Ooh, that's about, strong. I know yeah. how I was gonna feel about the rye whiskey. It's like you lit, you light this in your mouth, you can blow out a flame. I didn't know how I was gonna feel about the rye whiskey at first, but I tried it in ginger ale with some. Alright guys, I'm gonna stop for a second. Like a, like a, Do a little pause for a second, y'all. <laughs> Listen, this is my favorite Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels Tennessee honey. It's very sweet. It's not very sweet, but it's a little sweet, but it's so delicious, y'all. Watch this. You gotta close your eyes when you drink it. Mm. It's like candy in your mouth. It really is. It, it, is. Is. it is. This is like a sexy date. It, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm going to drink this whole one. I'm not going to just sip no, this one. No, you don't have to save any of it. Yeah. You can drink all of it if you want to. Mm. So just finish up 
tasting here at Jack Daniels. Now we're about to go to the Barrel House. And then we're gonna go into the city square and some lunch at Bobo's. And you're coming along with us. So this is the Barrel House here. Oh, you got the special key. Brandy, Brandy has a special key to the Barrel House. Brandy is the plug. <laughs> Brandy is the plug. That means you don't wanna know everything. Oh, honey, I know what the plug is. <laughs> oh, she said you know what the plug is. <laughs> Ready to I don't know what the hit house was. I don't know what the plug is. I'm in this game, okay? She said, boo-boo, I got this. Like, you don't have to break it down for me. Mm, it smells so, I love, this smells like my grandma house. Look. <laughs> what my grandma house smells like. Now you're telling grandma's secrets. I right? am. Right. Grandma's got whiskey in her house, I don't know about. And here is where we've done renovations. Oh. Okay. Wow. Wow, this is cool. So these are private tastings that they have here. So y'all, this is the conclusion of our Jack Daniels tour behind the scenes. Brandy and Ashley have been phenomenal. Yes. Give us a hug. Right. Yes, oh. <laughs> Ashley, thank you, thank you so, you so much. Can't wait to connect I, more. I know, it's gonna be this good. Really awesome, good. thank you so much. <laughs> the love. They're our family now. All right, so our next stop brings us to Miss Mary Bobo's. So this is one of the popular eatery spots here in Lynchburg, and we're about to go eat some down-home Southern food. So Miss Mary Bobo's is actually where Jack Daniels used to come here to eat. We're heading into the spring house room. This is where we're eating. It's not all here yet, though. I know I want some mashed potatoes. I'm gonna try the llama beans and the candied apples. Hmm, it smells good. I'd like to welcome you once again. Uh, these meals are pretty much like Mary would have in her boarding house for lunch every day. She'd have a couple meats, she'd have a couple um, uh, vegetables, she'd have a couple starches, and uh, we will have a lovely dessert, I promise. I also have a favorite today, which is the tomato casserole, which is made kind of like stewed tomatoes. Um, I had somebody at my table earlier say, this tastes kind of like pizza. And I thought, well, you know, it does have a lot of those flavors in it. So I hope you enjoy it as much as we have. All right, so we just finished up an amazing lunch here at Miss Mary's Bobo here in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Amazing tour at the Jack Daniels Distillery with Danny and I. Danny, did you have a good time? I had an amazing time. I must say that uh, I have the itis right about now. I mean, <laughs> we really chowed down here at Miss Mary's uh, Bobo in Lynchburg, Tennessee. It was family style. It was something totally uh, unexpected and different. I mean, yeah. we sat down with a group of people in a very, you know, intimate space in a closed room. And true. we went around the table and introduced ourselves and told a little bit about ourselves. And we were able to break bread with people that we wouldn't typically break bread with on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. how was the experience for you the experience was great it's just like the history that I learned in one day uh, American history African American history uh, my entire mindset about you know a liqueur such as Jack Daniels it has a, a, a very unique and touching story uh, to it mm -hmm. and uh, I know things will never be the same for me when so when I walk up in a spot set up at a bar I already know I want Jack Daniels. I want Jack Daniels. That's all I want. <laughs> but it has to be that honey, though. The Tennessee. Jack Daniels honey. Tennessee honey. Oh, my goodness. Lord. Lord. We got a bottle. <laughs> we got to go home and drink some tea yeah, and drink yeah, Jack Daniels yeah, honey. Yeah. But I hope you've enjoyed this adventure today. Adventure will. Adventures with Danny. And until next time, people, you know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe button and tell us what's up. Peace. Hey. <laughs>